life now. <laughs> so we're just gonna go keep going straight, straight, side wide. Hello guys. Chaco Millionaire is back again. You know I can't stay away from you guys, huh? Hmm. I can't stay away from you guys. For some reason I just can't stay away from you guys. Hmm. Somebody has decided to drive me, so I have all the time to talk while whilst I'm being driven, huh? Alright. Um, so whilst I was on the live that live session that just ended I was only seeing limited questions but when I finished the session and I ended it I saw that there were so many questions for some reason Facebook is not I don't know whether it is when you I'm using my phone for the Facebook live huh? and for some reason the questions are always difficult to track so what I've done now is that I have my other phone with me my s9 uh, plus and then I'm going to just make sure that I can read my questions from there whilst I do this one you understand all right so bear with me there and uh, I'm going to try and read all your questions and answer them one by one forgive me it's not deliberate that I ignore your questions it was a tech challenge okay from Facebook hmm? do you guys know that sometimes it's difficult for me to even see your comments when I click on the comments and I try to read the comments it plays the videos Sometimes I genuinely want to respond to the comments, but it ends up playing the videos rather. I don't know whether you guys have experienced this. There are times when you watch a video and you want to actually read the comments and it doesn't allow you to read the comments. It, it rather plays the video to you. I don't know. Hmm. So I'm going to try my best to respond to the many, many questions that I saw on the other one. You can also post the questions again so I can answer them. A gentleman asked a question. Can I do a six months diploma and be eligible for permanent resident or be eligible for postgraduate work permit? The answer is a quick no. In fact, you can never get your postgraduate work permit unless if you go to a college, your total number of years is up to two years. But these guys know this. Even if now one year what you do for college, you never go to get your postgraduate work permit. It's never. That's a word never i'm going to wait for us to have a lot more people online then i can take all the questions huh or i know people are going to watch it back so i wouldn't i wouldn't wait for people then please i have a second class lower but my last two years at 3.9 blah 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 mabarak yakubu please watch my video on scholarship how to come to canada on scholarship is going to help you okay uh olua shegun fumi uh kai square taiwo I had statistics in HND, completed my West evaluation, discovered HND is equivalent to BSc. Uh, so, what is your question there, uh, Mr. Kai Square? Are you trying to come to a college or what are you planning to do with this? I know some of you are doing West. I have never recommended that. I've never told anybody to do West, which is World Education System where they convert your current credentials. I have never talked about this. So, those of you who do this, is not because I asked you to do that. It's because you chose to do that, okay? Just have that in mind. Now, Ty will come back again and let me know. What is your question here? Are you asking if you can use that to do something in Canada? Let me know about that, okay? Munira Abba, can someone come there for school and her mom? Your question isn't clear, Munira Abba. Can someone come there for school and her mom? Are you trying to say if you are a mother, you can still come to school? The answer is yes. They don't discriminate. You can have a brand new baby, they will still give you the admission. They will still even give you the visa. Can you come with your mother? Most likely not, because your mother is not coming to school. And your mother is not your nuclear family. So there is a high chance they will reject or refuse your mom, if you want to come with your mom. But if it's your child and your husband and you want to come with them, there is a good chance you may apply. And if you add the appropriate document to show you guys can manage your living expenses here without becoming uh, stranded, then they can actually approve that for you okay after an extension on your work permit how do you become a permanent resident this is from victor tor so victor tor when the first stage of when you finish school the first thing to do is immediately apply for your postgraduate work permit so if you did a master's minimum of one year of master's you are eligible to apply for postgraduate work permit if you went to a college a total of two years even if it's one year here one year here a total of two years it doesn't mean you must do it two straight years you can do one year first right after that you do another one year 
the moment you are almost finishing the second year that you're doing you can start applying for your postgraduate work permit now what do you do next whilst you are waiting for them to approve your postgraduate work permit you can easily just submit your application for permanent resident that is where if you're already married you can add your wife and your children if they are not yet in Canada if you are not yet married like I was I was single I quickly went to Ghana and I got married and I added my wife and she also got a permanent resident so you apply for your permanent residence only when you are on your postgraduate work permit so the moment you get your postgraduate work permit submit your permanent resident application okay all right some of these things will become more clearer to you when you actually move to Canada and you understand them even much better okay um, how do we get citizenship in Canada Philip Butchway how do we get citizenship so the first state to become a citizen is to become a permanent resident it is almost impossible to become a citizen without being a permanent resident when you become a permanent resident you can become a citizen between two to three years if you become a permanent resident from the day that you become a permanent resident if you have already done some college education or master's education in Canada you wait for two years you wait for two years to become a citizen you wait for two years after becoming a permanent resident to become a citizen so let me use you mr. Butcher as an example mr. Butcher comes to Canada in 2021 September to start a college program by 2022 ending he has finished his two years his two years he has almost finished by 2022 ending he quickly applies for his permanent residence by early 2023 or by mid 2023 he gets his permanent residence he's a permanent resident from the time when you become a permanent resident in 2023 middle of 2023 two years after that you are eligible to become a permanent resident sorry a citizen meaning by 2025 you are looking to becoming a canadian rest uh, a citizen so fast forward it is two years for somebody to finish a college education to become a permanent resident then when you apply for your permanent residence after your college education we are going to give the permanent residence application about one year of wait time so let's say you throw one year of permanent residence after you leave school and then when you become a permanent resident in that one year so two years college one year permanent resident you wait for another two years and you become a citizen in short somebody who goes to a college will have about five years from the time they enter Canada to become a citizen somebody who went to, went to do a master's of one year will have four years to become a citizen that is if they are quick with the applications why why four years for somebody who does a one year master's because he does one year of master's one year of maximum of permanent residence two years of waiting to become a citizen when you add all of that together that is four years so in the average person will need four to five years from the day they enter Canada to become a citizen the average person who comes to education will need four to five years to become a citizen this is normally for people who do masters and people who do diploma in colleges it is not the same for somebody who is doing a PhD it is not the same for somebody who does a PhD why PhD takes about four years to finish so you need to finish your school before you can start working on your permanent resident it is also not the same for somebody who does an undergraduate bachelor in a university some people decide not to go to college some people just decide to come and do a four year of their bachelor's education here you will need to always finish your school before you can become eligible for that all right all right let me try and answer some of the questions that I saw on the previous live stream uh, so the gentleman who has about six months of a course can I be eligible for postgraduate the answer is never a big never you need up to two years in total of a college education to be eligible for postgraduate work permit okay even a one-year college diploma if you stop there you are going back to your country you won't be able to stay in the country all right all right so that answers the question what was the other question I saw somebody had a question on baking I, I forgot I'm trying to remember the other courses um, do I need a personal bank statement for the application of any school while being sponsored by a family 
you don't need a bank statement when you're applying to the school you only need to apply for the school and they will give you admission based on your transcript based on your transcript based on your uh, your your educational credentials maybe you are using a degree you are using an hnd maybe you are using an ssc you know if it is a college the minimum they are looking for is just an ssc if you have that that is what they will normally use to 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 accept you for the school and then after that they are going to tell you when you should make the payment for the fees it's up to you if you pay now up to you if you don't pay the school no they care then go move on and give your spot to another person the only time that you need to prove financing is when you are going to apply for your visa. The visa officer's job is to check that this person is not coming to become a burden on the Canadian government when they come to school and we give them the visa. So when you are going for your visa, that is where you need to do all the proving of your financing. That is where you need to prove if you have money in your account. Bank statement will be relevant here, right? That is where you need to prove that uh, not only do you did you apply to the school, you also have made the payment for the school fees if you are doing a college education or you are paying your own fees and you are not on scholarship in fact those of us who are even on scholarship i recommend you still add a strong bank statement why your scholarship is just for your school fees your scholarship is not for your clothes your scholarship is not for your accommodation your scholarship does not give you money to go and buy food your scholarship does not give you money to go and do shopping your scholarship does not pay for your living expenses it only pays for your school fees so you must show a bank statement that when I come to Canada, I will have enough money to be able to pay for my own living expenses, my accommodation. You are not going to become a homeless person, right? The estimated value of living expense for one person who is coming to school or coming to live in Canada, if that person is an adult, more than 18 years, it's estimated that that person, I think is more than 14 years actually, it's estimated that that person needs an additional 10,000 Canadian dollars to cover their living expenses. So even aside from paying your fees, you need to show them that you can be able to manage your living expenses through a bank statement. If you already have a job, add your employment letter. If you have a job, let your employer write that you are somebody who has the means and you've been working here for this number of years, right? Your bank statement is the number one thing they will look at if you're applying. So here is a catch. Whether with scholarship or without a scholarship, you need a good bank statement. Here is the second catch. Those of you who are not even on scholarship and you are paying your school fees, you need a very, very rock solid bank statement. No be fake one. No. If you use fake bank statement or documents, they will ban you for five years if they catch you. I know somebody who has been banned for five years for, ban for using a fake bank statement. You don't want to use fake documents. If they catch you, your dream of traveling is over. In fact, it might become very difficult for you to even enter the United States too. Because Canada and US, they share information. Mm -hmm. You'll be surprised that you go to US and they already know you've been denied because of fraudulent documents somewhere. All right? All right. Um, if I, Josephine, uh, Dream J, if I have enough money in my account, do I need to present employment proof? Look, when it comes to traveling, yeah? The more the documents, the better. I'm going to say this again. The more the documents, the better. For example, they are asking you to prove money. Anything where you know can prove financial situation. Adam. See, they won't ask you to add your land, land documents or papers. So they won't even ask you to add your car ownership documents. They won't even ask you to ask, add your, uh, your investments that you've made with base capital or any of the banks or any bank or maybe who knows, men's gold. I don't know. They won't even ask you for it. But guys, anything where you consider an asset that you can prove, show them. Then go see this and know that you are not a hustler. Huh? I tell people, don't just add. In fact, you are working. Why won't you add to show you are working? Hmm? You are working. You are working. Why won't you add to show you are working? You are working. Why won't you use your pay slip to show you are making salary? You are working. Why won't you even want your boss to write a letter of recommendation to show that you are not somebody who is not important in Ghana? You are a highly valued, a high valued employee of this company and you are looking to go and upgrade yourself. Some people get refused because they don't know how to put their documents together. They just go and put one thing and they think that they will just approve it. No, I'm going to do a whole session when I'm going to talk about it. Yes, even if you have a landed property, add it. If you even have uh, 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 properties that are generating rental income, add all those documents. Beef them up. Add them. 
so that when they review, they know that this person is not a hustler. This person is not struggling. You, you understand what they talk? Yes. So basically, guys, here is it. The more the documents and the more credible and genuine and stronger they are, the better your case. When I was applying for my wife, I added all kind of documents you can imagine. Even if I had a goat that I was selling, I would have added the documents. I'm kidding. But basically, I'm saying the stronger your financial proof, the better. Financial proof is not just about bank statement. It's about any landed property or any asset. It's about any job you're doing. It's about pay slip. It's about lectures of recommendation. It's about things that show you have investment here and there. Inheritance, anything. These are all documents. Mm -hmm. Augustine Tete Ozo. I'm still volunteering. Augustine, thank you so much. Augustine, I don't know whether you sent me an email or somebody sent me an email on your behalf. I think I probably just saw a, a recent email. Augustine, thanks for reviewing the documents of people for me. Um, I appreciate those of you who are helping and volunteering from your heart. God bless you. Um, help people genuinely. And please, please, please make sure that nobody takes advantage of anybody as well. Uh, I want genuine people to help genuinely here, okay? Um, if anybody takes advantage of you, please remember to let me know. The person is going to be banned on the page, okay? But I'm open to people. Those of you who are even responding to messages, God bless you. Hmm? Nana Kojo Opari, I own a business here. I don't have invitation. How do I travel to Canada? I think that's the wrong question. You started right, but the ending is wrong. You don't have an invitation. Who is going to give you the invitation? That's the question. Hmm? Or are you talking about express entry invitation? I'm not sure if I understand the last part. I like the first part which says you own a business. That brings me to this question. Some of us, most people in Africa have small businesses. They have small businesses. They have small businesses. So you are a sole proprietor. You have something you're doing. You are hustling. You are doing some stuff. But our businesses are normally not registered. In Ghana, many people have businesses, but they don't register them. They don't have papers to show they have businesses. In fact, they don't even have a task identification number, what we call TIN in Ghana. I don't know how they call it in Nigeria. Mm? What they call TIN in Ghana, they don't have it. Mm? What are going to say? All right. So I'm trying to say that it is so common in Africa to be a business owner or an entrepreneur who goes to China, who has a store, who has something that is generating real money or selling a merchant, eh? who has something you're doing. But that business doesn't have any papers at all. How would this impact you? You see, it becomes difficult for the embassy, the visa officer, to verify the source of your money. So if you have plans of traveling and it's not too late, if possible, quickly just go and register your business and get the necessary documentation. You might just add those documents when you are applying for your visa. Right? If you don't even have a tax identification number, you might just want to go and get one. It might just be useful when you're applying. So that when they look at your income and your bank statement, they don't say that this person went to borrow it from somebody and went to put it in the account. I hope you understand. I hope you understand what they mean. Hmm? So please, please, find a way to legitimize your income if you know this income, know they pass through paper. I know many of us don't pay because we don't want, we, most of us don't have the papers because we don't want to pay tax. But when it comes to traveling, the visa officers are trained to just respect documents. So if it's not too late for you to get some, I remember when I was in Ghana, this NGO that I started on campus where I was just sharing information on how to get scholarship, I decided to even register it. I went to the Registrar General's department. I paid small money and they helped me register the, the, the business. PIAC Foundation. PIAC Foundation. I registered it. And I was on as a director, general, CEO, or whatever it, it is. And when I was doing my visa, I remember I added that document and I said that I had my own NGO. But only God knows that that NGO had not been in business for too long. But I still registered it. Right? Of course, you don't want to go and register two, three days before you apply. They will know that this is fake. You just did it just for the visa. But if you have a couple of months from now, just probably just find a way to formalize your things. Huh? It will help you. Bako Osman Mohammed. Bako. Bako Osman Mohammed. Bako. I'm Osman Mohammed. Bako from Nigeria. I'm from Kwara State. But I'm based in Abuja as a taxi driver. Can I make it here in Canada? I'm watching you. Do you have any credentials aside from being a taxi driver? Mr. Bako. Do you have any credentials? Do you have any academic credentials? Any schooling? Um, if the answer is no, uh, if the answer is no, not a problem. 
there is an opportunity for truck drivers in Canada where you can come in as a truck driver. But you need to prove that you are a truck driver and you've been driving long trucks, uh, hauling trucks and stuff like that, right? They just won't bring you here. I'm going to do a live session where I'm going to talk about that as well. How you can come here if you're a truck driver, all right? I just found a lot of information. I'm still finding more. I'll come online and I'm going to share that information with you. Unfortunately, truck drivers are not the same as taxi drivers. They are completely different. Truck drivers are people who learn how to operate heavy-duty cars and pressure brakes. Mm? That is completely a different monster altogether from driving just a taxi. So unfortunately, I don't have an answer for you for taxi driving, okay? All right. Uh, I've lost my questions again. I can't see them, so let me try and use my other phone. Um, the question is stuck on Baku Usman's question, but I believe there are many more questions coming. So let me try and open my other phone, okay? Let me go look for Chaka Milonia. To the black car, no corner, right? Okay. Yeah, we can tell you where go straight. Bye bye, Kevka Crown. Good. Chaka Milonia, where are you? Um, guys, I'm coming. I'm trying to open the messages on my other phone since it is just stuck on Baku's message, and I believe there are many more messages there or questions. So I'm just trying to open them up, okay? It is just stuck on Baku's message. All right. So I'm here now. Mazi Alaboska. Uh, your question just disappeared. Okay, keep the questions coming, guys. Okay, Josephine Baffo, why doesn't give transcript? They give certificates. Your school will give your transcript from first year to your last year in the school. We simply call it report sheet. Uh, I think she's trying to respond to somebody. How do you get a transcript for WIAC? Guys, okay, so when you apply for your colleges, yeah, they will ask you to mail them the official documents, right? Yeah. Most colleges will let you mail it to them. How do you do that? If you don't have your official WIAC or WASC result or SSC result, if you didn't take it because you were, you, did, you were not interested and you finished school, you need to get back to WIAC. You need to let them give it to you. You cannot send the document in a plain envelope. You cannot send it in a plain envelope. You can't send it in just a regular envelope. It has to come in a sealed official envelope of the institution that awarded it. I'm going to say this again. If your document is coming from WIAC, you need to tell them you are mailing it to a school or you are mailing it for an official purposes. You like them to put it in their official envelope and you like them to stamp and seal it. If that document you send is opened before it gets to the school, they'll consider that as fake and they won't take it. This applies to people who are also applying for masters. The schools may ask you to either mail by postal services the official hard copy of your document, like your transcript, your, your 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 transcript and your certificate, or they may ask you to submit it electronically in PDF. If they want you to do it in PDF, that means that you can do it yourself. But if they want the hard copy to be mailed, guys, remember this: I made this mistake. I went and I sent mine in a normal envelope. They wrote back to me and said they cannot accept it. I had to go back to University of Ghana to the registrar. The, the registry uh, of the University of Ghana and I had to now go and pay money for them to put it in an official envelope seal it and then I went and I posted that official envelope like that the reason why they do that is that they know people can use fake documents that is why they want it to come from an official place the moment the seal is broken forget it they won't take it so it is always up to you to now check on the school and see whether they are asking you to upload the document or they want the official document to be mailed okay James Watt, can I have a bachelor's degree and still apply for a college with all the constantly denied because I'm planning to study in another? Yes, too many applications is not bad. In fact, I remember saying that when I was doing my own applications in the year of 2013, I did six schools in 
Norway. I applied to six schools for scholarship in Norway. I applied to one school in UK. I applied to one school in the US and I applied to one school in Canada. In fact, I was more Norway oriented at that time I wanted to go to Norway. So I did a lot in Norway. And then at the end of the day, I applied for all those schools in the same year. When the admissions came out of the six in Norway, I had three of them on full, full scholarship. I had UK and I also had US for full scholarship. And I had Canada too. I ended up coming to Canada. So the more the applications, the better. But also remember, guys, my reason for doing Norway was because there was no application fee. Norway was free. You could apply to 100 schools without paying a dime. So I ended up doing more there. But the other places where I had to pay 50 pounds, hundred dollars that was why I carefully watched my money and I was able to apply so my simple answer is know yourself know what your documents are know what your financial situation is know what your financial situation is and then be able to spread yourself because here is it if you apply to one school and you wait for six months or three months and you don't get the admission cost 90 you are going to start all over again so it's better to cast your net wide it's better to cast your net wide knowing that at least you may have a chance than not to cast it wide at all okay but remember too close mm -hmm. but remember it all depends on it all depends on your financial situation some people don't even have hundred dollars to apply for a college it's already hard so with somebody like that if money is your problem just pick one good college that you know you're gonna get it and you know you can afford the fees i hope that makes sense to you all right so it all depends on your financial situation um matthew ajiman I'm having equipment uh, mechanic with intermediate qualification. Can I get a college? Yes. Remember, you can get a college if you have a minimum of secondary school. Minimum secondary school, guys, all you need. So don't tell me you have a mechanical equipment. It's not a qualification. Tell me what your academic credential is, and then you know. So guys, all of you listening, if the minimum education you have is secondary school, you are eligible to apply to a college. That's all you need. So don't tell me I have this job. It does, the job is not a school education. Tell me what education you actually have, right? Then tell me how. Okay, so don't say, oh, I'm a hairdresser. Can I apply to a college? That is not a good question. A good question is, I have this education. Remember, we always say minimum. It means without that, you can't apply. Mm -hmm. The minimum education that is needed to enter a college is secondary school. So here is the simple answer. If you don't have a college, uh, secondary school education, unfortunately, you will not be eligible to apply to a college. If you do not have a minimum of a secondary school education that you can prove with a WIAC resort, you do not qualify to apply to a college. It doesn't even matter your job. They look for your education. Okay? Okay. Let me when you go straight. You go straight. All right. Um, so for some reason, guys, look at the funny thing. This phone that I'm using is stuck on Mbako Usman's question right but over here i'm seeing so many questions do you see that the beauty of facebook huh hmm. yeah that is why sometimes you, you realize that i may not respond because facebook is not helping me right so maybe i should use two phones all right um back i don't know what you did your question is stuck on my main phone i don't know what you did uh, let me make it left uh sammy newton i hold an hnd in graphic design a second class upper polytechnic um can I use it to apply to diploma? Yes, minimum in secondary school, you are more than qualified. You can use even your HND. If you don't want to use your WIAC, you can use your HND. If you don't want to use your secondary school, you can use your degree to apply to a college. Okay? okay. All right. Grace, um, Dennis Orlando's, is it true your grades don't matter when you're applying to a college? Yes, it's true. Colleges normally will overlook your, your grades. So many if you are using a secondary school, you call it in the name, make it left, right? If you are using a secondary school resort, they don't care about your grades. If you get an F, D, D, they may give it to you. If you are using an H and D, they don't care how bad your grades are. They don't even care how good your grades are. They will give it to you. Uh, if you are also using your degree to apply to a college, they don't care whether you had F or not. They most likely will give you the admission. Why do they do that though? Because all they care about is your school fees. They don't really care about your grades. 
the most important thing is at least you have a certificate showing you went to that school right or your transcript all right charlotte charlotte uh charlotte your question just disappeared if you can just come back with that question your question just disappeared coded prints minimum level is just a coded print automatically you are out please with all due respect automatically you are out when it comes to a college okay um remember without a minimum of secondary school you can't apply to a college unless you are from a wealthy family and your parents want to bring you to a high school can you come to a high school here guys yes you can use your junior high school like coded prints and come to a high school but with that your parents need to show they are going to sponsor you through the entire duration of your high school education and with this they are going to be looking at the funds of your parents so you alone cannot just come to a high school because you'll be considered maybe a younger person right or if you are even an adult an older person and you think you don't have all the secondary thing but you can pay your own fees then you must prove the source of your income and apply to come to a high school here yes you cannot use a jss resort to come to a college it's impossible never all right any hope for somebody is mazi alaboska any hope for somebody because sniffer uh, any hope for somebody from central europe with msc in international studies uh mazi unfortunately your msc is very very general it doesn't tell me what kind of msc it is for example let's let me clarify this you see when you see just an msc i don't know how strong your msc grades are right so maybe you did an msc and you had very good grades then you have a chance or maybe before that msc you have a degree that you did and your degree grades are good you can actually combine both your degree and your msc and then use that to apply for a second master's degree in canada can you do that yes you can combine both your first degree and your msc and make a good case that you know what i'm a scholar i did a thesis in msc in this you know and uh, my, my grades are good and you can target some schools with scholarship i recommend you watch my video on scholarship to give you an upper hand uh, and more information on that but if you are the type that you think that your grades are not too good both your bachelor's and your msc you are not proud of it you don't think they are strong enough and competitive enough and you can afford your own fees definitely you want to come to a college here and do your college thing okay all right um bright note is admission open to canada now yes admission is open you can apply i have recommended that when you are applying choose a choose a starting time that is about two semesters away there are three semesters in Canada. Fall starts in September. Winter starts in January. Spring starts in May. I'm gonna go over it. What's that track now? You find it proper, okay? Mm, yeah. Um, there are three semesters here in Canada, guys. Fall, F-A-L-L, starts in September. First week of September, fall starts. Then there is a second semester, which is called a winter semester, where snow starts. Mm? That starts in January. So as we are speaking now, the, the semester which is about to start is the fall semester, because that is about one and a half to two months away. Mm? Fall starts in September. So that is the one that is about to start. For example, you are applying. Should you apply and choose fall of 2021? The, the answer is a big no. Why? From the time they give you the admission how much time do you have to apply for your visa you have no time school will start and you will not even get your visa so anytime you're applying guys i recommend you give yourself at least two semesters ahead to allow you to get your admission organize your documents and be able to do your visa application you don't want to go and apply only to realize that you do not have time to apply for your visa because of covid you go straight you go straight mm -hmm. him. because of covid yeah, it's taking yeah because of covid it's taking even much longer to process visas now it's taking an average of about it's taking an average of about uh six to seven months or some people are even getting theirs in five months the visa when you apply because of covid the backlog huh so you need to factor all this thing. you need to even go and check the visa processing time you can google it how long is it taking to get a student visa it will give you an idea how, in fact you know yourself how long will it take you to pay the fees from the day they give you the admission if you're on scholarship how long will it take you to get your bank statement ready 
You don't want to go and choose a starting time for your school when you're applying for your school. And then they give you the admission and you say, now I don't have the time to get my bank statement and school is started. And you're going through all kind of psychological trauma. When you're applying, give yourself enough time to be able to apply. I recommend at least two semesters ahead of you. I got my visa in May, but I didn't come to school until it was September. Right? That means I had more time to do my things, more time to gather my stuff, more time to uh, buy my clothes, more time to put my uh, ticket money together, to buy my air ticket. You need to give yourself time. Mm -hmm. All right. Codec Prince, please, you didn't finish reading my question. I'm a truck driver now, currently driving a truck in Ghana. But, okay. But I only have a GSS. Okay. You're a truck driver, so there is a chance for you, Codec Prince. Um, there is something for people who are truck drivers. Um, I'm going to talk about that on a different stream. I can't talk about that now. But I just found out that truck drivers can come to Canada, actually. Uh, you need to have all your proof that you're a truck driver. And then when we get there, we're going to talk about that coded print. Sorry for not re seeing all your questions, okay? All right. Um, Matthew Ajima, please. I study diesel and heavy equipment mechanics in Kumase. In Kumase. Um, and I was... Stop. Yanko. And I was awarded Kwekunya I have a BSc 2.1 is that 2.1 or 2 versus 1 and MSc quantitative study with Mary from UK I want to read MSc in construction project management they making left power hmm? management in uh, university uh, so go check these two videos, Kwesi. I'm not going to answer your question because you never gave me the actual GPS you had. So I'm not able to give you specific answers on that. Go watch my video on scholarships and go watch my video on colleges. The two videos will assist you based on your situation, okay? Based on your situation. Guys, I'm sorry, but you see, it takes a lot of energy for me to respond to the many questions. So if your questions are not clear enough and detailed, you make it easy for me to just skip them. For example, you don't need to tell me you have a degree in this. What should I do? That is nothing. You're, you can't just tell me you have a degree and you hope that I will imagine or assume what your GPA is, right? If you need an answer that will help you, you, be, you have to be really clear with your questions. If you just tell me you have a degree or you have an MSc without telling me how strong your grades are based on your own analysis, it means that I will also answer and refer you to go just watch a video all right so please try to be very clear concise with your questions it helps me to really answer them well all right i'm trying to multitask and give so many people the same answers mm -hmm. all right um please do i also need to write as exams so this is a question that is so general i don't even know how to answer it out exam for what as exam for what questions you just can't throw a general thing there and assume that I'm going to understand it okay all right when you ask a good question you get a good answer if you had a very general question you don't get a good answer for it all right one of the acts of uh, good communication is to be concise and ask good questions okay so please do your best to be clear as possible if you are from Ghana and Nigeria or a Commonwealth country meaning your country you use English as your first language. You don't need an ask if you're applying to a college. You don't need an ask. I'm assuming that's what this guy is asking. But however, if you are doing an express entry application, you're going to be needing an ask at some point for that. Okay. All right. Um, have I answered all the questions? And make it right, eh? Have I answered all the questions? Patrick Atubonku, I'm not going to answer your question until you come back and you clarify what you mean by your marketing because I can't assume, I can't, I can't assume what your grades are to advise you. If you want an answer, you could just go and watch my two videos, one on colleges and one on scholarships, okay? Because you didn't state what your grades are or what your GPA situation is, okay? All right, Yankos are traffic lighting, come make a left point. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much for your time. I may come back again when I get a chance. Okay. Uh, Francis Nogbeji oh, yeah. left. Left. Francis Nogbeji. Think of three. Francis Nogbeji, you are a freelancer. Uh, I work for businesses outside Ghana with that. 
for instance, you are a freelancer. Um, now you are leaving it for me to imagine what your freelancing is. Freelancer as a journalist or freelancer as what? When you come back clearly, I may be able to answer your question for you, okay? Um, is there any other question? Matthew Ajima, you didn't answer my question. Can you repost your question? Iwoha, Kingsley. Can the school fees be refunded if the embassy did not give an answer? This is a very good question. Can it be refunded if the uh, embassy didn't give? Yes. Especially if you paid half of the fees or you paid all of the fees. Uh, these are some of the questions you should even ask the school when you're applying. Send them an email. Ask them, what, ask them about their refund policy. Take a left. Most schools will state their refund policy on the website. New Brunswick Community College, for example. Men, men, too much. Hmm? New Brunswick Community College, for example. They have a non-refundable policy of $500, meaning that they will not refund your $500 to you if that is all you paid. Other schools will refund all the money to you. In fact, most of them will refund all the money to you if you paid all the fees or 60% or 50%. But I recommend these two things, guys. Remember to read the program requirement. Remember, it's your job to read the program requirement. It's not my job. It is your job to read the program requirement. You don't need to go and pay fees without reading information that is posted under the program. Every course is different. Every school is different. Make sure you read under the program what they say about their fees and their refund policy. If they did not put it there, send an email to them. Contact them. Find their email. Send them an email and ask them about their refund policy. That way, if you know you're applying and you're paying the fees, you know you can get the money back or you can get this back. But generally, most schools will refund your fees to you if you paid all of it. The only time they will not refund is when they state clearly that they will not refund this amount to you. And I know New Brunswick, for example, they will state that they will not refund $500 to you. Meaning if you pay $9,000, for example, or $8,000, they may hold back $500. Just because that's their policy. Right? Don't also give up when you apply for your first visa. Just keep applying and applying. They're going to give it to you. I've also advised that or suggested that those of you who can afford to pay the full fees go ahead and pay all of it it makes a very very good chance for you okay it makes a very 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 good chance but if you know you don't have the money and you can pay half or 60 percent based on what the school says on the course go ahead and pay just exactly what they ask new brunswick will only require you to pay 500 dollars. they will not ask you to pay all the fees they will only ask you to pay 500 dollars. but if i was a visa officer and you pay just a 500 dollars and you don't have strong documentation to show that you have enough money, I'll refuse you the visa. Why? That $500. If we give you the visa when you come and you don't pay the fees, you will disappear in the system. Many of African brothers, that's what they do. So they, will, they are trained to look at those who even make good payments that show they are serious. Not those who just pay $500 and they won't go collect visa, come and disappear in the system. Huh? All right. So you see, Mr. Nogbeji, thanks for coming back. You work as a general virtual assistant, you see? But you needed to add all this in that simple question there. Mm -hmm. Now you have to come back again. All right, um, virtual assistant, but what, you, what was your qualification again? I missed the qualification part. Uh, I missed the qualification. Virtual assistant, it depends. If you're a virtual assistant doing just, for example, I can hire a virtual assistant to respond to my messages on Facebook for me. It is not a competitive skill set. With all due respect, it's not a skill set that Canada needs here. But if you're a programmer, virtual assistant is considered to be doing basic stuff, right? So I won't consider that to be a serious competitive skill that will make Canada just hungrily come for you. But if you know you are a programmer, a data scientist, or you have some serious IT skill set, then definitely you have a good chance in actually looking to even come in as an express entry person or, or, or maybe going through a college here. I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, Mbala Obina, you just came online. Sorry about that. You may have to start a video after it ends, okay? All right. Or if you have a question, you can post it and I'll try to answer. I'm 21 years old and I want to come to college. Go watch my videos on colleges in Mbala. We'll make a left, okay? Mm -hmm. Go watch my video on how to come to college in Mbala. That will be a simple answer to you, okay? All right. Mm -hmm. And um, um, is there any other question that I haven't answered? Tijani Muzba, can I still study in Canada with about 10 years study gap with work? They don't care about your study gap. <laughs> Remember, the school doesn't even know you've worked before. Huh? All they care about is that you have the minimum education needed to apply. 
Now, when you are going for your visa, they don't even care whether you have a job or not. They care about you proving that you can afford their tuition and your living expenses. Some people use bank statements of relatives or friends or family members um, to prove their financing is something you can do. Some people also use their own bank statement. Either of them is okay. The most important thing is that you have the appropriate document to support your proof of income. Then changing lane incorrect. Mm -hmm. All right. So I hope that answers your question there. Is age a barrier to coming to Canada? Definitely not a barrier if you are coming through school, but it could be a barrier if you are doing express entry. With express entry, applicants are trying to get permanent residence straight from Africa or different parts of the world. So the person who is applying for express entry is trying to get his permanent residence straight without having to come to school in Canada or without having to come to do anything. The older you are, the lesser your points if you are doing express entry. So somebody who is in his 20s or 30s but has very good education and good job has a better point system when it comes to age than somebody who is older. Uh, so, for example, if you are 54 years old and you are applying for express entry, I am in my mid-30s. If I have a better qualification in jobs, better educational qualification, I will score more points than you who is older than me. So with express entry, age is a factor. But when it comes to education, age is not a factor. When it comes to most of the other uh, streams for coming to Canada, uh, like a truck driver and stuff like that, they might look at your age because they don't want to bring somebody who's going to retire in two years, right? And want to drive yes. a truck. Yeah, way. I hope you understand. So age is a factor for the type of application that you're going to do. But when it's education, it's not a factor. It's not a factor. I hope you got it. All right. All right, guys. That's why I'm going to end my live session today. Um, then I come. I want to travel to Canada, but I have a secondary certificate. How can I apply? Go watch my video on colleges is going to help you a lot Dana Kwame colleges how to come here as a college student it's going to help you okay thank you so much guys we'll connect again another time follow me on YouTube Chaco Millionaire follow me on Instagram at Chaco Millionaire no space no space in between it okay no space Chaco Millionaire Chaco Millionaire Chaco Millionaire God bless you thank you very much bye bye